together. Hymn number 502 tonight. Hymn 502. And can it be, amen, hymn 502. Let's lift it up to the Lord. Amen. I love I love this verse. I get excited about this. Amen. Praise the Lord. Them chains fell off. Amen. Praise the Lord. Because of the blood of Jesus Christ. Lift it up to the Lord on that last verse. You know the chains have fallen off of you? Amen. The chains Amen. of sin, the chains of darkness, the Amen. chains of hell and death and the grave. You know, oh, one day Jesus Christ is coming back and he's coming back soon. And the dead in Christ shall rise first. Then those of us, I don't know about you, but I'm planning on being here when Jesus comes back. Yeah. You say, well, what if you're not? It's not going to bother me. The dead in Christ rise first. <laughs> 
But I, I just think he's coming in my lifetime, right? Yes. Dead in Christ, and those of us which are alive and remain should be caught up together with him. Where? Yeah. Imagine looking down. Some of y'all are scared of heights. <laughs> but on that day, even so come quickly, Lord Jesus, right? In the moment, in the twinkling of an eye, and we shall all be changed. And just imagine what the day that will be. Thank the Lord. Thank the Lord. And can it be that he that would die for us? And good to see you tonight. And uh, boy, you know, that's, that's the message we're trying to get to the rest of the world. Yeah. Folks don't understand how amazing it is that the God of heaven would come and, and die for their, and for, for their sins and their souls. And they're trying to work their way to heaven and realizing you can't work your way to heaven. The payment's already been paid. Amen. The, Amen. The, 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 the work has been done. It's finished. And they need to know. Jesus Christ is Lord and King, and he'll save them from the uttermost to the guttermost. Yeah. Amen. Good to see you on this Friday night, and thank you for being here. Those of you that have been here or Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, boy, you, you feel like I'm kind of tired right now, but hey, you know what? You've made it all the way to Friday, and thank you for being faithful, church. Those that have helped and cleaned and cooked and served and, and uh, just, been, just been busy about the work, thank you. Thank you, thank you, from the bottom of my heart. And uh, we've been able to be a blessing to our missionaries. Took them out uh, today and uh, enjoyed some time of fellowship. And uh, some of the fellowship we had with the men, I can't hear out of my left ear now. <laughs> Sorry about that. You know, they, we have earplugs, and uh, they were stuffed in, and they felt like the, it felt like everything was fine until you pulled the one out. And it was like, yeah. there was a ringing on that one side, and it's still <laughs> ringing. And uh, I was helping one of the men today. We were in a lane, and, and we were uh, loading a couple uh, magazines. And we had the target. It was all the way back. We were going to change it. But while we were loading, the person next to us fired. Boom! Oh. Yeah. Well, that's, I mean, that, that's what only happens. The person next to you fires. They're not going to wait for you to leave to fire. It, it's yeah. a gun range, right? And, so, but it fired, and the crazy thing was, whatever they were shooting, the, the, the paper right here, it moved, woof, and it blew, and I'm standing right next to it, and it blew so much, I went, <laughs> okay, I did not get hit. <laughs> I think I want to step back, boom, and it waved again, and then I was like, wow, uh, was it Brother Copeland, were you watching me at that time, or one of, the, one of you men were watching me, and, was it you, Brother Ward, yeah, you were like, uh, <laughs> When that, when that target started moving in the air, yeah, we were both going, yeah, I think I'm going to step back a little bit. And, uh, but we had a good time. And uh, ladies, that's the stuff, kind of stuff ladies miss, right? And, um, you know, miss it on that. But y'all, I think y'all had a good time, too. Yeah, we thought y'all were, well, yeah, that's why we did. if we teach them how to shoot, yeah, teach them how to shoot, they might. Yes. Yes, and uh, praise the Lord for that. Well, let's pray. Ask the Lord's blessings upon uh, tonight's service. Thank you again for being here, and uh, just a joy to be in the house of the Lord. Amen. You know, if you consider it's a Friday night, some people are going to races, some people are running from the storms, some people are in, in, involved in sin and wickedness, yep. and we have the opportunity to be in the house of God. Amen. We have the opportunity to sing the praises of the Lord, and hear from heaven and the Holy Spirit of God touch our hearts for the cause of missions. There is not a life like being a Christian, is there? And we thank the Lord for it. Let's pray and ask the Lord to meet with us tonight. Brother Matthews, would you lead us in prayer? Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you again for this day that you've given us, Father, this opportunity to be in your house and hear your word preached. Father, I just pray that you bless this time together. Continue to watch over us and keep us all safe and fulfilled by our travels. Amen. 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 Just want to remind you, tomorrow morning, 1030, soul winning. And uh, let me let those of you that are not from this area know, uh, right now we're experiencing a uh, uh, north central Texas cold front. And uh, it's been nice and 80 degrees now. It will be 50 degrees cooler tomorrow morning. And so, uh, so as you come, hey, dress accordingly. Uh, there will be a windshield. Uh, at certain times of the hour, they said windshield could be in the 20s. And uh, so uh, now if, if, you have, if you have any kind of persuasion with the Lord, Ask him to warm it up in the morning, and uh, you know, it sure, sure would be nice. And uh, but if you if you don't, well, uh, well, you don't. And so, uh, but hey, come be a part in the church. Come and come with us. Okay, our missionaries are going to be here, and uh, part of uh, part of the reason they're going to be here at ten thirty. Well, part of it's because they kind of have to be. It's on the schedule, right? And uh, so they kind of show up, and and uh, can you imagine that being on their schedule? Well, I've got to do it. 
But I, I, I have a tendency to think, and, and I would hope this is the case of all of our missionaries, they don't just have to be here, they want to be here. You see, they're coming to be missionaries not just to go to a, a foreign nation and, and enjoy the lifestyle of a foreign nation. They're coming to witness to people around the world. And if you can't do it in America, how do you do it around the world? That's right. Right? Yeah. And so, so I think they want to be here, and it sure would be a blessing if somebody comes with them. And I uh, could send them out and go out with them, and, you know, ladies with ladies and men with men, and it sure would be a, a blessing. So we don't say, uh, you know, something like, uh, well, Brother Miss Norris, uh, you go ahead and head over here, and, and you make a left. You, you, you know Texas directions. You get over here, and you'll see the feed store on the right, and you make a, you make a, a, a right there. And then when you get to the second house on the left, there's a big oak tree on the front. You know, uh, make sure you, you, you don't pass it, but right before it, you make the left turn. Yeah, that's country directions, isn't it? And uh, so, and, and can you imagine how it'll be for them? Did we was that a big oak tree or was that a medium-sized oak tree? <laughs> yeah, left or right, and I uh, get confused. So it'd be good to have somebody go with them. So if you can be here tomorrow morning, 10:30, again, dress warm, but uh, it's all right. Uh, the Lord will be with you as, as you go. Hey, folks, die and go to hell, even in the cold, as they do in the hot. Don't they? So come and be a part, 1030 tomorrow morning. Also, uh, tomorrow night, our service will be at what time? Six o'clock. Six o'clock, okay, six o'clock. If you come at seven, you're going to get here at the end. So six o'clock, Dr. Smith is going to uh, uh, preach a message tomorrow night, but also we'll have a time of question and answer. won't be a presentation tomorrow, but a time of question and answer for our missionaries. Maybe you've got a question about Taiwan, and, and you'd like uh, Brother Coleros to actually answer in Mandarin again. You're like, that was pretty neat. And uh, uh well, as long as we have a translator, right? And uh, so Kelsey's going to translate then for us. Yeah. Wonderful. And uh, yeah, you could have, yeah, you could have, if you'd gone to Nelson Salon, you'd translate her for, uh, for, you know, what they do. No, uh, so maybe, maybe you do have a question about uh, Taiwan. Maybe, maybe you got a question about Mogadishu. You're in the wrong, you're in the wrong missions conference. <laughs> So if you have a question about Mogadishu, don't, uh, don't ask any of our missionaries because they don't know. They might know, but uh, if you have a question about Mozambique, uh, you know, if you've got a question about Zimbabwe, you know, hey, keep that one to later. And uh, if you have a, hey, you might ask some questions about uh, Madagascar. Getting closer. You see, getting closer, yeah, yeah. And uh, no, Mozambique, I do know it's Mozambique. And so you go, you know, you don't realize, hey, are, are coastal nations in Africa like the coastal nations here? We've been talking a little bit about, ask them about the avocados. That's called a, East, that's called a Texas exaggeration there. It wasn't quite this big, you know. Hey, you heard about that one-armed fisherman? Oh, man, he caught a huge one. It was, oh, you, you've never seen one like it. I mean, it was at least this big. Yeah. So uh, ask them about the avocados and the... Uh, yeah, it's all right. And uh, a tutorial question and answer. So, by the way, let me encourage you. Have some questions ready, okay? And uh, the, the hardest part is getting started, and then we got to shut it off. And so if we waste three minutes waiting for someone to ask the first question, and then at the end we're going to say, all right, that's it. Someone's going to go, oh, I didn't get to ask. He goes, get ready. Ask a question when it's time, okay? And so that's tomorrow night, 6 o'clock. Come and be a part. And then we look forward to our victory service and our, and our uh, in Sunday evening, but our morning service as well. Uh, in Sunday school, Dr. Smith will be teaching in the Sunday school uh, for our adults as well as preaching the morning service, preaching the evening service, and uh, Sunday evening we will turn in uh, all of our Faith Promise Mission cards. Does anybody not get a Faith Promise Mission card? Caleb got one last night and so he's not going to raise his hand tonight and uh, so make sure you get one of those and uh, the church our goal is $50,000 $50,000 a year. Some people say wow that's, that's more than some people make in a year what price would you put upon your soul? If somebody invested $50,000 in you that you might be saved, would it be worth it to you? And the thing is, is we're not asking one person to do $50,000. I, I, I don't think there's anybody here that can do $50,000 on their own. But if we all together work together, I mean, 50, 50 people can do $1,000, right? 100 people can do $500. You say, I don't know if I can do $500. Do the math. It's not much. We spend more than that at McDonald's. Yeah, <laughs> one meal. Yeah, especially me with eight kids, right? And uh, hey, listen, six kids, eight people, whatever it is. Hey, I'm tired. <laughs> so uh, sometimes we pick up extra kids. You know, once you have six, what is worth two more? And uh, but uh, hey, off times, 
Look, look, at, look at what's spent in vending machines. Right? You buy a 25 cent soda for $1.50. That's how vending machines work, by the way. And it just might be that you say, Lord, you know what? What would you have me to do? And the Lord would say, it's time, to cu- it's time to cut this and that you might do this. Would we be any worse off? Many can give testimony of times when God worked upon your heart and you began to do that which God asked you to do and you look back and you thought, I haven't really missed anything. And at the end of the year, you see what you've been able to do in the, for the sake of missions and for the sake of Christ and lost souls around the world and you haven't missed anything, but they've gained everything. Yes, sir. It's so worth it. It's so worth it. So church, I want you to be in prayer with me for our goal of $50,000. Be in prayer about what the Lord would have for you to do in that part. And if, if you remember and you say, I can do the $50,000, then do it. But it doesn't mean the rest of the members do nothing. You see, it's easy for us to go, well, so-and-so can do it. We'll let them do it. No, if, if that one individual can do $50,000 a year, then the rest of us ought to make up uh, another $50,000 and let's make it a hundred. Right? Why not? Uh, you know, if we all do what we can do, that was our theme last year, doing what we can with what we have, right? Some of us, the reason for the chalk board and chalk, some of us haven't learned. It's not about doing your best for the pastor or doing your best for the plaster. It's doing your best for the master, yeah. right? And we're, delayed, we're laying down foundations in our lives now. And can I say, even in the area of stewardship, some Christians do not have a strong foundation. Amen. And because of that, they are missing <coughs> out in life. I'm now able to give more to God than I've ever given in my entire life. And yet God has given me more than I've ever had in my entire life. And I scratch my head and say, okay, Lord, how's that work? It's not for you to know how it works. It's for you to obey. That's why it's faith, by faith, right? And uh, it's amazing what God can do if we'll just but trust him. So we're looking forward to that victory service Sunday night. Again, plan to be here tomorrow, 6 o'clock, all day on Sunday. And uh, look forward to each uh, opportunity to hear from the Lord. Well, grab your hymn book, hymn number 42. Say by the Lord.
off on the chorus there. Lift it up on that fourth verse. Saved by the blood of the cross, saved by blood. All hail to the blood, all hail to the Son, all hail to the Spirit, the great, great blood. Saved by the blood of the cross, saved by blood. Singing, you may be seated. Amen. Well, thank the Lord for the opportunity to be saved. And uh, remember, uh, growing up as a teenager, not knowing Christ as my Savior, I didn't know I was even lost. Nobody had told me I was lost. I thought if I died, I'd go to heaven. Now looking back, I find out I was lost and on my way to a devil's hell. And yet, by the grace of God, a soul winner knocked on my door and led me to Christ. My life's been different ever since. I wonder how many people around the world don't even know they're lost. Some of those folks were in Mozambique, and it's good to have the, uh, the Norris family uh, with us tonight. And, uh, of course, uh, Brother Miss Norris and their kids, and I've enjoyed some fellowship with them. And looking forward to hearing, uh, Brother Norris, from your presentation. And uh, Mozambique, Africa, places where most Americans don't even know about. A lot of folks who claim to be African-American don't even know where Mozambique is at. And yet there's a God of heaven who knows exactly where it's at. Amen. And there are people there, he knows exactly who they are. And there are souls that he died for, and he knows exactly how to save them. If only there's someone that'd go. I wonder if there's anybody here that'd go to Mozambique. I'm waiting for Brother Taylor to say he will. And uh, <laughs> Brother Taylor, do you come and introduce, if you will, your wife? Do you want to introduce your wife before this, or do you want to just... I didn't ask you ahead of time. We'll go and play this and let you say something afterwards. And uh, so uh, looking forward to, again, another presentation. And uh, wow. <laughs> On the southeast coast of the dark continent known as Africa, just across from the island of Madagascar is the country of Mozambique a country that just over 20 years ago ended a 15 and a half year civil war that claimed over a million lives. Because of the long civil war, two thirds of the population of almost 25 million people are under the age of 24. Mozambique is very needy for the gospel of Christ. With many people following Catholicism, the cults, Islam are no religion at all. The truth does not abound. We are the Taylor Norris family, and God has called us to take the light of the gospel of Christ to the people of Mozambique. I was raised in a Christian home, but it was not until I was the age of 20 and in Bible college that I received Christ's payment for my sin. Once I was saved, I continued my Bible schooling at my home church's institute, where I later graduated. Since salvation, I have served in my local church in many ways, being a bus captain, teaching Sunday school, and leading kids' choirs. God called me to preach while at a summer youth camp, and on a missions trip to Zambia, Africa in 2012, God called me to missions. It was then in 2014 at a missions conference that God laid Mozambique on my heart. My wife, Lauren, was also raised in a Christian home, and at the age of 12 was saved at a family camp. When she was 14, her family moved to Argentina to be missionaries, and it was on a furlough around the age of 18 that she came home. We met, were soon married, and has since served alongside me in the ministry. After learning the Portuguese language in Portugal, with God's leading, we will begin work in Mozambique and the northern city of Tete, where there is no independent Baptist missionary work. Mozambique is almost twice the size of California, making it a 25 hour drive from where we will be to the capital where most other missionaries are. 
initially, we plan to establish relationships with local government officials and business owners to be able to share the gospel and make ourselves known around town. But the focal point of our ministry will be reaching the youth through outreach programs such as sports and Bible clubs. Once we have reached the young people, it will give us the opportunity to enter their homes and witness to their parents and families. With those that we have won to Christ, we will then begin discipleship and start a local New Testament church with the hopes of one day turning it over to mature Christian nationals. As God blesses and the ministry grows, we plan to spread the gospel across the northern regions of Mozambique and by God's grace, one day to other Portuguese speaking countries across South Africa. Would you consider partnering with us through prayer and financial support as we endeavor to reach the people of Mozambique with the gospel of Jesus Christ? a blessing to be here and I just want to say thank you to Pastor for allowing us to be here. Um, if you haven't met us, um, my name is Taylor Norris. This is my wife Lauren right down here and um, I know we had our family picture on the video but this was actually made three years ago and there's actually addition to the family. We have two kids, our son Deacon, he's three and our daughter Eden, she'll be two um, next month. And uh, God has called us, I believe, to the country of Mozambique to reach this upcoming generation. I don't know if you caught that during the, the video but two thirds of the entire population of what is now closer to 29 million people are under the age of 24. About 2% of the population would be 55 years and older. I mean, if you think about that, that's nothing but a bunch of kids in a country without any kind of adult leadership, hardly at all. And another thing that plays into it is I've had several people ask me, well, what's the main religion in the country? And, and I would say Catholicism, but that's only 28% of the population, which goes to show the, the vast differences of, of beliefs in this country. And I believe it's because those people are searching for something. And the problem is, is they're not finding it. So they go and they try something out. In fact, to be in the country, you have to be registered with the government. And there's over 730 religious organizations registered with the government. Now, I don't know about you, but if you have over 700 religious organizations and people are still looking for something, the truth isn't being told. There's only two other independent missionary, independent Baptist missionaries in the entire country. When I first felt God's call, there was three, but one came off the field permanently which means there's less laborers in the field. And we've, we've been praying that God would allow us to leave for the con for language school. We have to learn language first, the beginning of this next year. Um, currently we're at 37%. And I know to a lot of people that seems like an impossible task, but you know, we serve a God who can do impossible things. And I know that there's not much time left in this year, but I've been praying that God would bring in that last percentage and that we could leave. Our goal has been to get to the field by 2020. The, the, the city, you saw a little bit of it in the, in the video, it's called Tete, and it's got a population of over 300,000 people. And as far as I know, I've, I've searched the internet and I've read things. The last time there was a gospel witness in that city was when David Livingston stopped in that city to do translation work. And so we're praying that God would use us mightily, that God would allow us to see souls saved and to see churches planted. And you know what, I, I, I can't help but say that I, I was excited to see Brother Ward's video last night. And that's the great thing about missions conferences. Even as a missionary, you see other missionaries' presentations and you feel you, you could go right to that country and get right involved. And you know what, missions conference is great. You heard it. I, I was called to Mozambique at a missions conference. So please let God talk to you this week if he hasn't already been. You never know. Somebody right here, I think it was said by Dr. Smith last night, God might be calling you to the mission field. So please, just, just, just pray with us that God would allow us to get to the field. And then pray that God would enable us to continue so that in eight years we can come back and we can give a presentation like Brother Ward. And even farther down the field that my kids could come back like Amen. Brother Kohler's and be going back to the field. Amen. Thank you very much.
One more song this evening before our special and then uh, the preaching. Hymn number 177, hymn 177, Great is thy faithfulness, let's stand together. prepares to come to sing for us. Uh, church, you don't uh, maybe not know Caleb, but Caleb is uh, also surrendered to go to the mission field to, to the Republic of Congo. And, and uh, 2000, excuse me, 1994, 1994, my family and I went to church for the very first time. A couple ladies, a piano player and a third grade girl Sunday school teacher had knocked on my door and talked to my sisters. Mrs. Friedline and Mrs. Howe and knocked on our door and led my sisters to Christ. My mom was excited. She was raised in church. Years ago, she was active in an independent Baptist church. But my entire life, we had never gone. That Easter Sunday of 1994, with weeping and gnashing of teeth. <laughs> all the kids, all my two sisters, myself, my parents, we loaded up in the car and we headed to church. 
Caleb's dad was teaching Sunday school. He was a youth pastor. My wife was a teenager in the youth department. Caleb was much younger then. What not even born then? You weren't born in 94. I was born in 94. Oh, wow. <laughs> did not just happen. Wow. Uh, do you have an extra gizmo laying around? <laughs> wow. I didn't know much about the Cavanagh family, but I do know this. We came to church for a few few weeks or about a month or so and it was at the same time God called the Caleb or called the Cavanagh family to Rosebud Oregon Roseburg Rosebud Roseburg it's all the same Zimbabwe Madagascar uh, I remember still as a teenager I, I listened to Brother Cavanagh teach a few lessons I heard Dr. Smith preach I was still lost their family left and went to a small town, whatever the name of it is, <laughs> in Oregon. They've been there ever since. One thing I, I respect most is men of God who go to where God sent them and stay. Amen. Uh, I see so often a pastor or somebody in ministry and listen, God can do what he wants to do. But I see them two years here and four years there and three years here and two years there and I look for the consistency of the Holy Spirit. I appreciate your parents staying faithful all these years and going to a small town. As, as I came to Sanger, Texas, folks would say, Where, when are you leaving Sanger to go to the next best? No, the best thing is God's will, and if God put me here, then I'm going to stay here. And don't leave until God moves you. And as a grand, grandchildren to Brother Mrs. Smith, Brother Cavanagh's son-in-law to Brother Mrs. Smith, and uh, now we not only see Brother Smith preaching in our missions conference, now we have, of course, we know Joe and Katie. They were here last year. We see two more of their grandchildren here tonight. And uh, it's grateful to see when not only your faithfulness that God pays off by you staying faithful, but by your children and Amen. grandchildren. Caleb, okay, appreciate you singing for us tonight. After he's done singing, preaching, you come. Look forward to hearing from you. Yeah.
messes you up for preaching. Amen. Lord. That's good. Amen. Praise the Lord. Someone asked what rewards are there in serving God? That see your grandkids making a presentation to serve God on some foreign soil or to pastor a church or to serve, oh my. Yes, to know that there's a legacy, yes, a mark that cannot be removed. And every one of us are living and building a legacy. Yes, <laughs> Boy, to know that your children are serving God. Your grandchildren are serving God. What a blessing. Well, it's been a joy to be here. Enjoy being with you, dear folks. Enjoy missions conferences. I'm telling you, every missionary, when I started out in the ministry, every time I had a missionary, I felt like God was calling me to that country. And then one day, how can this be true? How can God be calling me to Brazil and Ecuador and Africa and Canada and the Philippines? And one day I realized God wasn't calling me to go there. He is giving me a burden for missions to help those he's called there to go. And let me remind you that every one of these men, women that stand up here talking about God's call in their life, when God called them, he did not call them just to a geographical position. He called them because there is a people with Amen. eternal souls Amen. waiting there for them. Right. Amen. Right. When God calls a young man to preach here in America, he, he's got a people in mind for them. Amen. And what a terrible thing that we get so caught up in this world and wanting to th think we deserve so much. Yes. The only thing we deserve is hell. Amen. But to think we deserve so much that we forget God's calling. And one day we'll stand before God and people are going to have to give an account for the souls, the people that could have been reached but were not reached because they did not go. Now it's not just the going, it's the getting them there. The other night in one of the presentations, it had the passage from Romans chapter 10. God's willing to save whosoever shall call on the name of the Lord. But the next three verses gives God's plan to get that good news to the people. How can they, how can they call on him whom they've not heard? They've got to have a preacher. And how can the preacher go except they be sent? And who's going to send them? That brings it right back to me and you. Right back to me and you. Are you aware, for years I could tell you what the average 
contribution of a church was to a missionary. For years, it was $50. Then it jumped up to $60 a month from a church. And I don't know what it is now, maybe $75 if you added all the churches together and got the average uh, $75, $80. But you know, it's going to take somewhere between 60 and 75 churches to get a missionary to the field and keep him there. One of the great sins today is that missionaries are so burdened to go, they go before they raise their needed support. And they get to the field and they spend their entire time just trying to make ends meet just trying to survive instead of doing the work God's called them to do. It's not just God's plan for them to go. It's God's plan that we who are here seek God's will about what He'd have us to do personally to get them to the field. It's a partnership. And we've got to do our part before they can do their part. And if they don't do their part, God's not going to do His part. Because it is the gospel that activates faith. Romans 12, 3 tells us that God's given to every man a measure of faith. But that faith is not activated until the gospel is given to them. And that's the reason we're told to go into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature because God's made plans to save them. He has faith for them to believe if that faith can be activated through the preaching of the gospel. That sets the Holy Spirit of God loose to bring about conviction and conversion. But my, it's not just the missionary. It's as much our part as it is theirs. If they can't go, the people there God's called them to is not going to hear the gospel. If we don't give, they can't go. So let me challenge you. Let me challenge you to seek God's leadership about your part. Your part. How many missionaries do you support? Thirty-nine. Uh, that's a good hunk of money. But you can do more. You can do more, but only when you ask God what he'd have you to do and then do it. You think, man, mine's nothing. What My giving, what can it do? Well, it makes up a part of the whole. And without the part, there won't be the whole. Without the you doing your part, then you'll not be able to send that next missionary out and keep them on the field. Many missionaries get on the field. And by the way, I'd rather have 60 or 70 churches supporting me $75, $80 a month than to have one church giving me all of it. Or four churches giving me all of it. Churches have problems from time to time. And all you need is for one church out of four to go through problems and not be able to give, and that missionary's got to come home. Besides that, when you have 60, 70, 75 churches supporting a missionary, just think of the prayer band that can be behind them. Well, it's a wonderful thing that God has made it possible for us to have a part in His eternal divine plan. And we must not, we must not forget our part in it. Let me ask you a question. If the Apostle Paul was here tonight and said, uh, would you go with me on my next missions trip? Would you go? Huh, would you like to do that? I want to speak to you tonight on the subject, being a partner 
with Paul. Amen. Being a partner with Paul. Open your Bible to the book of Philemon. The book of Philemon. <clears throat> now tomorrow night, the message is going to be somewhere between 12 and 15 minutes long. If I keep it under that, will you give an extra hundred dollars in the love offering? Well, you blew it. Philemon, Philemon. If you're able to stand out of love and respect for the Word of God, would you stand with me? And we're going to take time to read this entire chapter, this entire book of the Bible. The Bible says, Paul, a prisoner of Jesus Christ, and Timothy, our brother, unto Philemon, our dearly beloved and fellow laborer, to our beloved Appia and Archippus, our fellow soldier, and to the church in thy house. Grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. I thank my God in making mention of thee always in my prayers, hearing of thy love and faith which thou hast toward the Lord Jesus and toward all the saints, that the communication of thy faith may be effectual by the acknowledging of every good thing which is in you in Christ Jesus. For we have great joy and consolation in thy love, because the bowels of the saints are refreshed by thee, brother. Wherefore, though I might be much bold in Christ to enjoin thee that which is convenient, yet for love's sake I rather beseech thee, being such an one as Paul the aged, and now also a prisoner of Jesus Christ. I beseech thee for my son Onesimus, whom I have begotten in my bonds, which in time past was to thee unprofitable, but now profitable to thee and to me, whom I have sent again, thou therefore receive him, that is, mine own bowels, whom I would have retained with me, that in thy stead he might have ministered unto me in the bonds of the gospel." But without my, thy mind would I do nothing. Without your permission would I not do it, he said. That thy benefit should not be as it were of necessity, but willingly. Perhaps he therefore departed for a season that thou should have re shouldest receive him forever. Now, uh, not now as a servant, but above a servant, a brother beloved, especially to me, but how much more unto thee both in the flesh and in the Lord. If thou count me therefore a partner, receive him as myself. If he hath wronged thee or oweth thee aught, put that on mine account. I, Paul, have written it with mine own hand. I'll repay it. Albeit, I do not say to thee how thou owest unto me even thine own self besides. Yea, brother, let me have joy of thee in the Lord, Refresh my bowels in the Lord, having confidence in thy obedience, I uh, wrote unto thee, knowing that thou wilt also do more than I say. But withal prepare me also a lodging, for I trust that through your prayers I shall be given unto you. There salute thee, Ephorus, my fellow prisoner in Christ Jesus, Marcus, Artisticus, Demas, Lucas, my fellow laborer, the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with your spirit. Amen. Now back in verse number 17, Paul in his letter to Onesimus said, If thou count me therefore a partner, a partner. If you count me therefore a partner. I want to talk to you about the possibility of me and you becoming partners with the Apostle Paul. Amen. Father, help me now in the next few minutes to look at this and learn how we can partner in this great ministry 
with the first missionary ever sent out from a local New Testament church. A missionary that you used to turn the world upside down. A missionary that you used to give us 14 books of the New Testament. A missionary that though he's dead, he still preaches week after week, day after day, as people take his example, his teachings, his epistles, and proclaim them throughout the world. Now, Heavenly Father, would you bless this church tonight? They're trying to take a step forward they've never taken before. This church has never given $50,000 to world missions. And yet this pastor has that burden and that vision. And may these dear people realize that if God laid that on his heart for this church, then every person here, from the oldest to the youngest, has a part of that as their responsibility also. And help us to be wise enough and trust you enough to be willing to ask you, Lord, what is my part? What will thou have me to do? And then do it. Fill me with thy spirit and speak through me tonight. Thank you for the presentation of Brother Norris and his life and family that are dedicated to go there to those dear people and reach a new generation with the gospel. Thank you for the song tonight by Brother Caleb. Bless him, Heavenly Father, and get these men and women to their calling, to their field, as quickly as possible, because time is running out. We love you and need you in Jesus' name. Amen. You may be seated. <clears throat> Paul is writing to Philemon from his prison cell in Rome. Philemon was a rich influential Colossian who was led to Christ by Paul. And he allowed a new church to meet in his own home. And Paul now writes to Philemon in behalf of a runaway slave named Onesimus. Onesimus is not the same person as when he ran away from his master Philemon. See, while in prison, Paul had led Onesimus to accept Christ as his Savior. He tells about it in verse number 10 and verse 15 and 16. Onesimus ran away as a slave, but now he's a child of God. He ran away in bondage, but he is about to return in his servitude as a brother in Christ. In this letter to Philemon, Paul is quick to draw on Philemon's love for him in order that it might benefit Onesimus. And by the way, that's what missions is. God is trying to draw on your love for the Lord Jesus Christ to benefit souls around the world that need to hear the gospel. Now, Paul tells Philemon, if Onesimus has wronged you or owes you, then put it to my account, Paul says. I'll repay it when I come. You say, that's wonderful, that's generous. But being a good independent fundamental Baptist, Paul reminds uh, Philemon that he owes him far more than Onesimus owes him. Look at verse number 19. I have, uh, he said, verse 18, if he hath wronged thee or owe thee aught, put that on mine account. I, Paul, have written it with my own hand. I will repay it, albeit... I do not say to thee how thou owest me, even thine own self besides. I love it. Now, Paul does not count Onesimus as a good-for-nothing runaway slave. He counts him as a newborn brother in Jesus Christ. When we come by the way of the cross, we all stand on level ground. Paul said, there is no difference. Now in Christ, there's no difference between Philemon and Onesimus. Both were sinners. Both now have been saved by the same shed blood of Jesus Christ. Amen. Now comes our text verse. Paul said in verse 17, If thou count me therefore a partner, receive him as myself. 
Now, partner means to have something in common. Working together to accomplish a common goal. Paul is saying to Philemon, if you have the same Christ and the same Holy Spirit and the same love for God as I do, then receive Onesimus as you would receive me. He is my son in Christ and your brother in Christ. He is as much a brother as Barnabas was in Christ or Silas was or Timothy or Titus or Luke or Epaphroditus or Ephraim, or, or Priscilla and Aquila. Of course, Priscilla was a sister in Christ. <laughs> it's also possible that you and I can be counted as partners with Paul if we share some of the things in common with him and join with him to evangelize the world. You know, it's amazing that we see his great ministry and we have these books, God used him to write down God's words. God inspired him to write these epistles. And in writing these epistles, he is still preaching. He is still evangelizing. He still works. And he's looking for me and you to join with him today and become partners with Paul. And I want to give you four or five quick thoughts that are necessary if we're going to be partners with Paul. First of all, we must be able to tell of a no-so salvation. We must be able to tell about a no-so salvation. There is no think-so salvation or hope-so salvation or maybe so or I'm working on it. You either have been born again or you haven't been born again. You're either saved or you're lost. May I remind you, Jesus tells us and gives us an illustration of the last days when the bridegroom is coming and half of the people that said they were waiting on Jesus to come were not ready when Jesus came. The door was shut and only they that were ready went in. Why, they even knocked on the door and said, Lord, Lord, have we not done many wonderful works in thy name? And Jesus said, depart from me. I never knew you. Salvation is not doing a lot of works. Salvation's a new birth, a birth from above, being born of the Spirit of God. It takes place. It's, it's performed by God in us when we accept Jesus Christ as our personal Savior. Paul's conversion is recorded three different times in the book of Acts alone. He tells about it in Acts chapter 9. He tells about it in Acts chapter 22. He tells about it again in Acts chapter 26. Over and over again, Paul refers to his salvation in his epistles. Now, Paul knew he was saved. Paul knew how he got saved. He knew when he got saved. He knew where he was when he got saved. And he knew where he was going <coughs> now that he was saved. Many today would like to be a partner with Paul, but they don't know the heavens are home. And I, I, I've got to say it here. I wonder how many people here struggle in doubt and uncertainty about your eternity. You don't want to go to hell, but you don't know for sure you're going to heaven. Well, God doesn't have plan A, B, or C. has only one way, and that way is Jesus. You must be born again. You must personally, definitely, and individually accept Jesus Christ as your Savior. I can't tell you a whole lot about my physical birth. I don't remember much about it. But I can tell you the details about my spiritual birth. Can you? You say, well, I remember getting baptized. That's not what I'm talking about. Hell's full of baptized, going to be full of baptized believers or people going to be full of baptized believers. They believe in baptism as the way to heaven. Hell's going to be full of church-going people that believe that going to church is the way to heaven. But Jesus is the way. 
And the only salvation God has provided is a no-so salvation. Amen, These things have are written unto them that believe that you may know you have eternal life. Amen. Now, if you don't know you have eternal life, like the Bible says, chances are you've never been saved the Bible way. Because yeah. when you get saved the Bible way, the moment you accept Christ as your Savior, something miraculous happens. Yes, sir. It's not chills or thrills. It may not even be tears. Yes, sir. Right. But when you get saved, the Holy Spirit of God yes. moves into your yes. body. Right. He indwells you. He leads you. He teaches you. He convicts you. Yeah, you know there's something different when you accept Christ. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Paul knew it. One can never enjoy the peace of knowing that your sins are forgiven now without a no-so salvation. One cannot in ever enjoy the benefits of heaven without a no-so salvation. All who are saved are joined by the common tie of the atoning blood of Jesus Christ and the indwelling of the Holy Spirit of God the moment you get saved. Our salvation experience may not be as dramatic are as exciting as Paul's was, but it will be just as real to you as his was. You must be born again. So I say to you, first of all, to be a partner with Paul, you've got to have a no-so yeah. salvation. Secondly, <coughs> to be a partner with Paul, one must have a surrendered will to God's will. Acts chapter 9, verse 6. Flat of his back on that Damascus road. Just got saved. Lord, what will thou have me to do? I believe Paul surrendered to God's will when he got saved. See, God had already planned on him being his preacher. He had already met with a preacher in Damascus and told him, that he's going to come and you're going to baptize him and I'm going to use him to preach the gospel. God already had his plans for his life. And I believe Paul surrendered to the will of God. This question never left the heart and mind of Paul. Lord, what wilt thou have me to do? If we're not careful as Christians, we'll come to the place where we begin to forget about God's will for our life and we begin to major on my will, yes. what I want. Right. Right. And in this selfish society of today, it's not just what I want, it's what I deserve. <laughs> you deserve it. I, I see these advertisements. Here's this beautiful Cadillac out there and said, you can have one. You deserve it. <laughs> Baloney. God has a will for my life, and too many Christians are majoring on your will for your life and not His will for your life. A surrendered, a surrendered will will keep you from shipwreck. It'll keep you from a broken home and a broken marriage. It'll keep you from wasted, uh, worthless and wasted children. A surrendered will will carry, will carried Paul onward and forward. <clears throat> though he was mistreated, though he was shipwrecked at sea, though he was beaten and cast into prison cells, he was stoned and drug out of the city like a dead dog and thrown into the ditch. It'll cause you to go on in Christ and in spite of it all, rejoice through it all. One of the greatest steps you'll ever make in your Christian life is to surrender to God's will for your life. Amen. Now, not all of us were like Paul in the sense that God revealed his plan for Paul's life when he got saved. But if you're, if you're like me, there's steps in your life where you surrender. Yes, I remember when I knelt at an altar in a revival meeting as a young married man 
making $50 a week under the preaching of Dallas Billington. Garland, Texas, Central Baptist Church. He was preaching a revival, and on a Wednesday night, I knelt about here at an altar and promised God from this day forward, out of every dime, I'll give you the first penny. Out of every dollar, I'll give you the first dime. Out of every $10, I'll give you the first dollar. I'm going to start to tithe. I surrendered my life to that will. It wasn't long until I knelt again and surrendered to teach a first grade boys class. And most of them knew more of the Bible than I did. <laughs> but I surrendered. Yes, sir. It wasn't long until I knelt again and made a surrender to God to learn how to be a soul winner and a witness for Jesus Christ. Amen. In the process of time, the first grade boys class grew from a first grade boys class to a young married couples class. And it wasn't long until I was kneeling again. My wife beside me, August the 23rd, 1964. And we surrendered our life to the Lord for the ministry. Over and over again, there's steps of personal surrender. I remember when we made a commitment to God and surrendered to start getting rid of worldly dress and worldly styles in our life. We surrendered to stop going to the movies. Step by step. But I'm here to tell you, if you're going to be a partner with Paul, there's got to be a time of surrendering your will to God's will. It may be a big step like it was with, with Paul when he got saved, or it may be step by step by step as God grows you. But your life, if you're going to amount to anything for God, and if you're going to be a partner with Paul, there's got to be evidence of a surrendered life. I remember my first introduction to Faith Promise. I thought, how in the world am I ever going to do this? Man, we live from paycheck to paycheck. And we've gone out and picked up Coke bottles and sold them to be able to buy milk for the kids. How are we going to give something extra? You know, we got rid of the picking up Coke bottles program when we learned to trust God. We started giving above our tithe to faith promise missions, and God started giving back. Giving back. God's plan is yes, But here's our problem if we're not careful. got to be that surrendered will. If we're going to be partners with Paul, one must have a surrendered will to God's will. Thirdly, if we're to count ourselves as partners with Paul, we must be yielded and led by the Holy Spirit of God. Amen. Now, that does not mean you're not going to make mistakes at time. You know, Turn to the book of Acts, chapter 13. Acts, chapter 13. Look at verse number 2. As they ministered to the Lord and fasted, the Holy Ghost said, Separate me Barnabas and Saul, that's Paul, for the work whereunto I have called them. And when they had fasted and prayed and laid their hands on them, they sent them away. So being sent forth by the Holy Ghost, they departed to Seleucia, and from thence they sailed to Cyprus. Paul was yielded to the leadership of the Holy Spirit of God. Now, did that mean Paul never made mistakes? No, he made mistakes. He was a human being. But he was man enough to 
obey the Holy Spirit when the Holy Spirit stopped him and gave him different direction. Turn over to Acts chapter 16. Now then, Paul and Silas are starting their second missionary journey. Paul knew God had called him. And Paul had a want to to preach the gospel in Asia. So he, he started to go. He started that direction. And in verse number five, so were the churches established in the faith and increased in number daily. And when they had gone through Phagia and through the region of Galatia and for, were forbidden of the Holy Ghost to preach the word in Asia, Paul was headed there and God's Holy Spirit stopped him. And after they were come to Mysia, they swayed to go into Bithynia. But the Holy Spirit suffered them not. The Holy Spirit stopped him again. And they passing by Mysia came to Troas, and a vision appeared to Paul in the night. And there stood a man of Macedonia praying him, Come over unto Macedonia and help us. So after he had seen that vision immediately, we endeavored to go into Macedonia, assuredly gathering that the Lord had called us for to preach the gospel unto him. Hey, if we'll be busy going, God will direct us. He may have to stop us a few times and redirect us. But if we'll be yielded to the Holy Spirit, whether he says stop, change directions, go here, we'll end up where God wants us to be. Amen. We're going to be a partner with the Apostle Paul. We've got to have a surrendered will, surrendered will to God's will. We must be led by the Holy Spirit of God. And let me tell you, when we're led by the Holy Spirit, He'll always lead us to the place where souls are ready to be won. As soon as they got to Macedonia, by the way, Macedonia was the gateway into Europe. And did you know the gospel went from Macedonia into Europe to Britain to America? And we're here tonight because a man way back yonder yielded to the leadership of the Holy Spirit of God. Now he's looking for some people to partner with him today because God's not through, folks. God's got souls to be reached. But he's looking for those, if we're going to be partners with Paul, that'll be led by the Holy Spirit. So the Holy Spirit led them to Macedonia. They got to Macedonia, came to a river bank, and there's a group of women there. Paul said, believe I'm going to say a word or two. <laughs> Preach the gospel. And Lydia got saved. And others got saved got baptized, converts. Another girl got saved. Then they were put in jail and the jailer got saved and his family got saved and a church was started there in Philippi. A giving church, a church that partnered with Paul to get the gospel. Hey, at one time, they were the only supporting church Paul had. Whew. What would you do if you was down to one church? <laughs> Must be led by the Holy Spirit. Fourthly, if we're to be counted as a partner with Paul, then we must also carry his burden for souls throughout the world. His burden. What are you burdened for tonight? Where is your burden tonight? You say, well, how can we know what Paul's burden was like? Turn over to Romans chapter 1. We, we hear sermons on the I am's, the great I am, God, the I am. Moses said, the I am that I am call me. Well, there's some I am's Paul had also. Look at verse 14. Paul said, I am debtor 
both to the Greeks and to the barbarians, both to the wise and to the unwise. He said, I'm a debtor. There is a debt I owe. God marvelously, wonderfully saved me and called me and gave me the gospel message. I know how to be saved. I know the answer to the sin problem. It's Jesus Christ. I know how to change a man's eternal destiny from hell to heaven. The gospel of Jesus Christ. I am debtor. And I'm here to tell you tonight that we who are saved, we who join ourselves with this local church, are debtors, both to the Greek and the barbarian, both to the wise and the unwise. Paul had a burden for souls throughout the world, but that's not all. Notice verse 15. Paul said, so much as in me is, I am ready. Amen. He said, I am debtor and I am ready to preach the gospel to you that are in Rome also. He knew if he went to Rome, he'd probably be in prison again but he had a burden for those people. He was a debtor, and he's ready. He was ready to do what God would have him to do as his part in world evangelism. I want you to know we're debtors tonight. And are we ready to do what God wants us to do as our part for world evangelism? But then look at verse 16. Paul said, for I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ, for it's the power of God unto salvation to everyone that believeth, to the Jew first and also to the Greek. He said, I'm not ashamed of the gospel. He said, I am debtor, I am ready, and I am not ashamed. You know what he understood? He understood heaven's worth for one soul. The worth of a soul as seen by God. Oh, my. When you look at people, what do you see? Do you see a prospect to sell them something to make some money? Or do you look at them and know that they are forever? From the day they were conceived in their mother's womb, there'll never be a day in eternity to come. They cease to exist. And they're going to live forever, either in heaven or hell, depending on what they do about Jesus Christ as their Savior. <coughs> and God's plan for them to know about Jesus is for me and you to tell them, I am debtor. We must be committed to do our part in fulfilling the Great Commission if we're to be partners with Paul. Some will ask, why should I want to be a partner with Paul? Because if you're, if you're not, you do not know Christ as you should know him. Why should some want to be a partner with Paul? Say, I, why would I want to be? Because if you're not, you're wasting your life on worthless and temporal endeavors. Why... Should I want to be a partner with Paul? Because if you're not, you're willfully disobedient to Christ's command to fulfill the Great Commission. Why should I want to be a partner with Paul? Because if you're not, you're missing the greatest possibilities and blessings for your life. Why should I want to be a partner with Paul? Because if you're not, you'll face the Lord Jesus one day at the judgment seat ashamed of the gospel. Ashamed to tell the people that Jesus died for their sins, was buried, and rose again for their justification. You will have wasted your opportunities in life. If you count yourself a partner with Paul, then you too must be willing to get involved in world missions through your local church. That's God's plan. God didn't call Paul out from a company to go to the mission field. He called him out of a local church. It was the local church that prayed over him 
and sent him out. God's plan is for you to become a partner with these missionaries and send them to the place of God's calling. Because there, there is a people waiting on them just as surely as there was a people waiting on Paul. Somewhere by a riverside, there's a Lydia. Somewhere, there's a jailer. Somewhere, there's a Timothy. Somewhere, there's a Philemon. Somewhere, there's an Onesimus. How are they going to hear unless we partner with Paul and send them to carry the gospel and be our partner in doing the work that God has left us here to do? Father, that's our message. Please speak to our hearts. Let us understand the importance of what we're here about. We're not to be moved just because of someone's burden to carry the gospel to a people. We're not to be moved just because someone has a story that's sad and that brings us to tears. We're to be moved because you died for sinners and they're on their way to hell without Christ. And we're to be moved because we're the ones you've put here with the responsibility to tell them. These missionaries have surrendered to go. And now, Lord, you need people who will surrender to say, Lord, I'll help send them. Help these dear people here at Victory Baptist Church to say, Lord, I know as a member of this church that part of that $50,000 is mine. What will thou have me to do? And then help us to do it by faith week after week, month after month. Bless this invitation in Jesus' name. Heads are bowed, eyes are closed. Let's stand to our feet. Have you ever thought about your partnership? What are you doing for Him, with Him, through Him? Won't you come and just kneel and say, Oh God, what would Thou have me to do? Speak to my heart. Let me know Your will for my life. I'll do it. While the piano's playing, could you come and say, Lord, use me. Speak through me. Help me to do Thy will. Maybe like me, God's going to put you on a path where you go from step to step to step. But it's got to begin by surrendering to that first step. You don't skip one to go to the other. Won't you come? Come tonight. Come tonight. <laughs> Are you partnering up with Paul? He said, well, Paul's not here. But the work that Paul started is still here. Faith Promise Missions is still here. And the call of God is still here. The Holy Spirit of God is still here. The Word of God is still here. The Church of God is still here. partner with them or not just think as preacher began the message if Paul came to you tonight and said would you like to go with me on the next missionary journey now many in church would say oh yeah but you ever read about what happened to Paul in his missionary journeys when you begin to think about it it's like oh wait a minute as he went on missionary journeys he always ended up in jail Beat, stole, shipwrecked, stripped naked, hung out to dry, left in the, in the ocean. Now, when you begin to think about it, now you say, hey, would you still want to go with Paul on his missionary journey? How many Christians go, oh, well, you know what? Now that I think about it, never mind. 
You see, you're looking at the things of this world. How many of you would like to be Paul as all those by the works of Paul? You stand before Jesus one day and he shows you all that were saved because you were faithful to him. You think Paul's thinking about the beatings now? You think Paul's thinking about the shipwreck now? You think Paul's thinking about the stocks and the difficulties, the stonings? Oh, no. My friend, not only just with those that he sees whose lives were changed because of him, but imagine when he saw his Savior face to face. When he saw Jesus there. Imagine as Jesus, as I would believe the Lord would say to Paul, well done. Paul did make mistakes. We see some of them in Scripture. However, for the Lord to say, well done, Paul, you think it was worth it all? Would you want to partner with Paul? You know what? As we get involved in Faith Promise Missions, we're partnering. As we pray for our missionaries, we're partnering. As we go ourselves, we're partnering. What an opportunity we have. Praise the Lord. Wish I had given him more. Fourteen books of the New Testament, Testament written by Paul. Anybody ever had a blessing from one of these books that Paul has pinned down? I mean... The major book of Philemon. We read it. Hey, by the way, you have read. You have read. If you read along with Doctor Smith, you've read an entire book of the Bible today. Wow! Only sixty-five more to go. I mean, think about. It. Have you ever any a blessing? I mean, well, I just happened to open my Bible here. I'm thinking of Paul talks to those at Thessalonica and talks about the rapture. Right? Anybody received a blessing from that? We recently preached in our church through the book of Philippians. So recent, in fact, it took us a while. <laughs> All four chapters. Was any of it of a help to you? Yes. First Corinthians, uh, a couple years ago, we preached a year and a half in First Corinthians. Any, any of that a help to you? As you read Romans chapter 10 and verse 13, I mean, is that a help to you? Wow. You know, the opportunity to be, as, as the preacher said, the ministry went up through Europe and to Great Britain to America. Anybody glad that we have the opportunity to have a church like this in America? Yeah. You ever think these books of the Bible and the gospel coming to America all happened because of missions? Where was Paul? What was he doing when he wrote to the Corinthian church? To the church at Ephesus? To the churches of Galatia? To those at Philippi? What was he doing? How did he know about those at Thessalonica and Colossae? He was involved in missions. Faith, promise, missions. And we are the byproduct of that. I'm glad somebody partnered with him. I'm glad somebody like the Philippian church, even in their poverty, gave abundantly unto the missionary. If we got a mission, mission letter, said, well, I'm in jail again. <laughs> How many churches? If Paul wrote a missions letter, risk report letter to the churches today, how many churches would support him? Every time I turn around, he's in prison. Right? Getting kicked out of town. But look at the work he did. And not to supersede the message. I hope you took heart to what Dr. Smith said, but you realize we're not just partnering with Paul. We're taking up his yoke. We get a chance to partner with Jesus Christ in the Great Commission. In the only, the only thing he established on this earth, the church. Wow. What an opportunity. What an opportunity. Ushers, if you'll prepare for our love offering tonight, and uh, again, church, every night we'll take out the love offering. Uh, we'll take it also Sunday morning, Sunday night. Uh, this is for us to be able to give uh, 
disperse it amongst our missionaries. I know uh, I've heard there are some churches they take a love offering and they've already prepared a certain amount of a love offering and whatever comes in in above that well, that just goes into the general fund. But we've already no, we don't do that around here. Amen. Right. If Victory Baptist Church gave ten cents to the love offering, then ten cents is how we're going to split up. Missionaries are praying we give more than ten cents. <laughs> But, you know, by faith, ask the Lord to get that 10 cents to spread. <laughs> if there was $10 million that came in on the love offering. You say, we got needs around here. If $10 million came in, you know what? It would only be right in the sight of God to give that $10 million to those to whom it was given. If we said it's a love offering, it's a love offering. Well, I didn't realize they were going to give that much. I kind of remember a couple people standing before Peter when they didn't realize they were going to get that much not going to be me no thank you no thank you we'll take up a love offering and every penny every nickel every dime will go to our to our guests that are with us this week and if everyone will take uh their opportunity to be a part in every offering in some way and then if everybody does does hey take one offering and, and give a good gift give a large gift you say what's large it depends who you ask to Joseph, I mean, it made five dollars might be a large gift, and you're thinking five bucks, that, that's easy. But to him, it's, that's a big gift. Yeah. The scripture talks about giving as every man is purposed in his heart. Ask the Lord, Lord, what, what would you want me to do? And I promise you, if we'll do that, we can be a blessing to those that are our guests this week. And uh, as we go to the Lord in prayer, let's ask the Lord to bless this offering as we give it unto him on behalf of of our missionaries and Dr. Smith. Brother Chad, would you ask the Lord to bless peace? some friends of the DeVito family and uh, last time they all stopped by we didn't chase you away huh you actually came back a second time and uh, we have a tendency of chasing some people away and uh, but uh, birds of a feather flock together also so uh, <laughs> no. and uh, it's a joy to joy to have you with us tonight oh we plan to come back tomorrow six o'clock okay six o'clock again uh, we'll have a, about a one-hour service and uh, have, have some questions and answers for our missionary guests uh, there won't be a presentation tomorrow for sake of time, but uh, an opportunity for us to ask questions. And, and uh, there, I'm sure the kids will have some questions. You know, what do you cook on in Mozambique? The stove. <laughs> right? And uh, in Taiwan, do they always eat Chinese food? <laughs> well, <laughs> uh, I know this. Some Taiwanese people that I know, you don't call them Chinese. And uh, that is bad. <laughs> Juju, right? And so the, they eat Taiwanese food, and uh, they may speak Mandarin, but they also have their own language. And uh, but no, yeah, they're bad. You get in trouble that way. And uh, so you may have some questions about that. You know, where in the world is Mogadishu? <laughs> you know, and uh, if you have some questions, ask. You say, well, we haven't heard from Brother McDonald about Kenya yet, and we don't know anything about. How, or, is everybody in Hungary hungry? And if, if they're so hungry, why don't they go over to Turkey? Because of Greece. Because of Greece, yes. And uh, somebody. Uh, yeah. uh, all joking. Hey, the parents, there'll be some questions like that, I'm sure. And uh, you might want to help some of your kids. Ask them, hey, what are you going to ask if they're going to ask a question? Uh, you know, uh, do, do, do Chinese people really eat cats and dogs? You know, and... Uh, that's Chinese, right? And uh, so, hey, all, all joking aside, uh, you know, you, you will, you'll want to know some things. You know, it, it'd be good if Americans could learn what's going on in the rest of the world. Yeah. Not just what the media is. Not, yeah, don't, yeah, besides what's on CNN. And uh, they can't figure out what's going on in America. You're going to tell, tell you what's going on somewhere else. And, uh, you know, to know there's, there's a real world out there. And there's people out there. 
and they're like the man of Macedonian calling. Would you come and help us? Would you come and help us? Thank you, church, for your faithfulness. Appreciate you being here tonight. Look forward to seeing you the rest of the week. Be in prayer with me about your part in, in our goal. I don't think our goal is above, above that we are able because if God's with us, who can be against us? Right? God has a vast supply. God can give us what we need to fulfill our goal and then some. God can help us to get the gospel around the world. The question is, are we going to listen? And then Dr. Smith leaves. You've turned your card in. Life gets in the way. It's not time, Mission's conference is not just for this week. We're to continue therein. And uh, grateful for the opportunity to do so. Let's stay in the night. Thank you again for being here. Again, if you haven't seen our missionary tables, stop by, uh, see them. Brother Miss Norris will have theirs in the foyer uh, th this evening. Get by. If you haven't got a prayer card from each of our missionaries, grab one. Grab one. Take it home. Be in prayer for them uh, as as they continue on the deputation trail. And uh, to Caleb tonight, thanks for singing. Great job. Great job. Even for somebody born in 1994. And uh, wow, that, that really hit hard as I thought about that. And so, wow, but uh, grateful. Grateful to have you here tonight. Let's pray. And that's the Lord's blessings upon us as we dismiss. Brother Nick, would you ask the Lord to dismiss us? Thank you, sir. <clears throat> and here we go, thank you.